The Hyundai Santa Cruz is a pretty cool vehicle in my humble opinion. Its quirky yet fun styling cues definitely see to that. But out the box, it's missing a few things that would definitely improve its looks. And in this video, I plan to add some visual mods to really pull off a more rugged and adventurous looking Santa Cruz. This is Adventure GT. Okay, so I got the door garnish kit right here. Um, the kit does come with a bunch of adhesion promoter packets. And then this important bag, which has the sticker template that you need to follow when uh, pushing the moldings into place. The moldings have that 3M tape. So once you place them, that's it. That way with the sticker, you can follow the orientation when setting up your uh, the alignment for your door garnish properly. So I went ahead and downloaded the instructions online because uh, these do not come with instructions. I guess they want dealerships to install them, uh, but I found them online. So that was kind of a cool thing. And uh, the plastics are labeled uh, which side is which right there. So you know this is the right rear part. And so that's what they look like. Hold up, pause right there. The fender flares don't come with colored wording, but I ordered a set of vinyl decals to really make the words pop. These were ordered on eBay for about $50. They were a little cheaper than that, but fitting the words in place was actually a little difficult, especially around the letters A and R. So ordering extra was a lifesaver. Get out of here. These were applied with a tiny sharp edge and pressed down with a Q-tip to avoid scratching and ensuring proper adhesion. And I think they turned out pretty great. Obviously these words were installed prior and that video probably played if I know my other self. So that's all there is to the door garnish. Uh, let's go ahead and get that applied. Close enough. So you can see that's clearly labeled front and over here you see A. So A is for the driver's side. You can find the exact same sticker, but it's labeled uh, D for the passenger side. So it'll be A, B, C, D, C, D, you know. We're gonna be starting the driver's side with A. Oh my God, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So that's gonna line up right with the fender flare and travel downward. There, a line with front door outer line. Travel downward. There. B, it's actually lied. So one sticky side, we press it in like that. And then, then we're gonna swap it on the other side. We'll pull off this front paper so it exactly mirrors just like it should over there. You're gonna line that one. That. So now we're gonna go ahead and test fit uh, the door garnish to see how it's gonna look. No wait, I gotta do the other side. All right, so it's basically lined up just like that, leaving just a little tiny gap in the back, about a millimeter, about one millimeter from the edge of the door. So you can see just that tiny gap and then resting on those lines. Before adding the adhesion promoter, they want you to tape this line so you have a perfect template of where this is supposed to go. Uh, I'm lazy and I don't have tape. Okay, I lied, I got tape. But anyways, A, so A, B, C, D, one side, perfect. There we go, these right here are the supplied uh, adhesion promoter spongies. So we're gonna go ahead and peel up just the corner. It says do one inch of uh, the tape sticking through. And we'll do that for every single piece because uh, once we get it set in place, we're gonna actually pull these along to tape the panel in place. That way it'll secure right where we want it and we don't have to fiddle around with it and fold it down just like that. With it kind of in place at this one inch mark, now, put that there just in case, go ahead and peel this 
forward and finish the adhesion process. So right here, pulling little by little that top door. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. There we go. Come down to the side, pulling a little bit by bit. Remove the rest of that tape. This is the first one done. Oh yeah. So there we have it, the door garnish is installed. We're not gonna go ahead and film the back side because it's exactly like this side. We're gonna go ahead and jump on the fender flares next. So aside from common hand tools like screwdrivers and sockets, you're gonna need two specialty tools. One, a panel removing tool, trim piece tool, that's to get behind all these pressure clips. And the other one is, unfortunately, a rib nut tool. If you happen to see my rock light video, you saw me put these rib nuts into the body frame to install the rock lights, obviously. I picked this tool up at Harbor Freight for about 30 bucks or less, and considering what you're gonna have to pay to have these flares installed at the dealership, it's actually kinda worth it to buy this tool. Anyways, you're gonna need a rivnut tool to install rivnuts in each of the fenders, and that's all you're gonna need, but let's go ahead and get into it. Genuine Hyundai accessory, genuine part number. That's everything right there. These will be the same as those cladding pieces. Uh, kind of marked out in the foam, but on the backs of the panels, they will show right and left, and that's how you figure out which side is gonna be which. I already pulled off this side, and it took less than like 15 minutes, a couple fasteners, and then these are all just held on by pressure clips but I will show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna remove this little piece right in here. These are just little pop clips, so you take your screwdriver on the back side, release that, so you'll release the top one, release the bottom one. Panel removing tool right there. So go ahead and pop those two out, and then on the bottom, it's just a Phillips head pop tab. That's not gonna agree with me. With the mud guard out of the way, we're gonna just grasp firmly. Remember, these are all pressure clips. You're gonna break some clips, you're gonna save some clips, they don't matter. Your new flares do come with clips. But you're gonna grab it right here, just give it a quick tug. Like that. It sounds like it's breaking, but you're not doing any damage to it. Keep releasing all the way up. Probably work your fingers in between as you go up too. Little tugs. Like that. There's one broken clip. Work your way. Okay, I lied. I did break one of the flares, but it's okay because we're getting fender flares. All the way to the bottom. There we go. Then for the back side, there's that little piece right there can actually stay on the old flare for now, but we do have to remove this one with this one little pop tab right there and the Phillips head pop tab right there. They do say in the instructions that you can use your panel removing tool to help pry against these tabs, but I don't want to pry on that fresh paint down there and scratch it up and scratch paint and rust. You can get a plastic panel removing tool, but I mean, we're not going to reuse these. Maybe we can sell them later, but uh, I see no issue with just the pulling method. Ah. Slide up. Dramatic replay. Pop. Push. Free. So there's the driver's side. No broken tabs. And on the passenger side, only one broken tab. So, I mean, you had a lot of clips in there to hold it in. But we're not reusing those. 
that's just if you want to sell it maybe you can take more time all right so unfortunately a couple of the clips did stay in the panel so I just taped the crap out of the body removing tool and we're gonna try to get this guy out actually just that's the way to do it twist it out <laughs> guinea pig and twist that one out too so that's turning the clips actually releases them intact if you did want to save these so that's kind of nice but make sure we get all those clips removed So that's the little bolt kit that came with the fender flares. And these are the rib nuts it was talking about. So that's our rib nut tool. All we have to do, I'm gonna thread that on there, insert, nut insert all the way forward, and then just squeeze those together <clears throat> like that. And then unthread from the rib nut. Okay, and there. One installed riv nut. We are going to put adhesion promoter on the inside where this 3M tape is gonna stick. And then we're gonna pull the corners back and do the same thing that we did with the door garnish. Flare is gonna sit just about like that. And the 3M right up in here too. Up to that point. And back down. Here's the other thing. So, this front flare as this attachment and what they want you to do is here's the back attachment they want you to assemble these two pieces together and insert a Phillips head screw joining them together take a coarse threaded nut and we're going to screw that together the coarse threaded screw is going to go into the fender flare and the fine threaded bolt is actually going to go where those rib nuts got put so that's together right there will stick together there we go right over here is little template for that little stick piece that's on the side so that goes on last that is this piece right here unfortunately there's no clips no markers so you have to use the other flare as guidance and get it lined up right like that <laughs> so there is the same sticker that we use to install the door garnish as a help try to guide that uh, 3M piece on. Other than that, uh, we do have to remove this little piece right here. The two screws that go inside that piece will mount to the new flare uh, on the back side. There, like that. <laughs> so we'll get that bolted on. Go ahead and prep adhesion promoter and then click those flares and that's basically done. find getting a couple clicked in up top makes things a lot easier for working your way around the bottom and that.
you don't want to forget about this either. Taking this off the old flare and bolting it on. It has longer screws that come with it too because the fender flare actually drops it down a little bit. So that screws on right down there. I had a problem on the other side with this one as well, going to the inside. Uh, I think we're gonna have to lay on the ground, try to press it from the inside of the truck. It's also wet right now. So I will get to that in a little second. Just remember, you only get one shot at this, so no pressure, yeah? And we just want about half a millimeter to a millimeter of space from the actual painted surface to the door, so that gap right there on both sides. That looks pretty good. Okay, and Pull the tape out. Get rid of our little template sticker. All right. So the last thing that we're supposed to install is the little caps. So we're supposed to install two eight millimeter bolts and the push button with a little cap. And I did that on the other side. That's fine and dandy. But for this side, I actually bought the Santa Cruz GoPro mount. So instead of putting the normal cap on, I'm actually gonna put the GoPro mount on uh, just to see what it looks like or maybe leave it on. I don't know. You definitely do not wanna go super tight on these. Just snug them up, they won't back off. If you over tighten that rib nut, you'll have to pull the whole flare back off drill it out and then put a new one in there and it will really ruin your day. So just don't hate yourself, just snug it up, do not over tighten it. Maybe check back in a couple of days to make sure they're still tight. There's no button on this one for the bottom, but those two bolts alone, it's pretty stout. Um, I think that's about it. Right, guys that's gonna be a wrap on this video I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please hit the subscribe button it really helps us out I guess the only thing left to do is to go and get it dirty 